Hello, and welcome back to QBank Pro Academy for another Q&A with detailed explanations. Join thousands of nursing students who have used our instruction. Remember to sign up for free resources with the link below, including a study guide, 75 question exam, quizzes, and more. Let's get started. What are the most common symptoms reported by COVID-19 patients? Select all that apply. Cough, shortness of breath, headache, muscle aches. The correct answer is cough, shortness of breath, headache, and muscle aches. Explanation. Some symptoms that are seen in COVID-19 patients are fever, cough, sore throat, headache, loss of smell, fatigue, chills, confusion, and taste abnormalities. This list is not inclusive of all symptoms reported. Note this question asks about the most common symptoms. Many patients with COVID-19 will report these symptoms. Nurses taking care of a non-hospitalized patient with COVID-19. What medication orders does the nurse expect to find on the chart? Select all that apply. Monoclonal antibodies, dexamethasone, acetaminophen, dextromethorphan. The correct answer is monoclonal antibodies, acetaminophen, and dextromethorphan. Explanation. Many medications provide symptomatic relief for patients with COVID-19, such as acetaminophen, antipyretics, and dextromethorphan. More medications are becoming available for the treatment of outpatients. They include monoclonal antibodies and the recently approved Paxlovid. The nurse is taking care of a hospitalized COVID-19 patient. What additional complications is she vigilant for in her patient? Select all that apply. Hypothyroidism, inflammatory complications, neurological complications, tinnitus. The correct answer is inflammatory complications and neurological complications. Explanation. Can you identify the key word in this question? This question asks about hospitalized patients. Hospitalized COVID-19 patients with Delta variant have more severe illness. SIRS, stroke, encephalitis, and confusion may occur in these patients. Milder symptoms are present in outpatients with COVID-19. True or false? Fever occurs in about 43% of COVID-19 patients in many cohort studies. The correct answer is true. Explanation. Fever is very common and occurs in most patients with COVID-19. Other symptoms present include cough, sore throat, headache, loss of smell, fatigue, chills, confusion, and taste abnormalities. These symptoms are present in many of the patients with the coronavirus, including some patients with the Omicron variant. The UAP asked the nurse about the initial test for COVID-19 in most patients. The nurse correctly answers. Select all that apply. Serological testing is recommended. Upper respiratory testing samples are recommended. Nasal swabs of the anterior nares may be recommended. Sputum sample testing is recommended. The correct answer is upper respiratory test samples are recommended and nasal swabs of the anterior nares may be recommended. Explanation. Most is an important keyword in this question. The question may use this word to help you differentiate between choices. The other two tests are used in some settings, but they are not used in most patients. True or false, in infants less than 12 months of age, clinical findings in patients with COVID-19 may include feeding difficulty. True, false, or cannot be determined. The correct answer is true. Explanation. Often symptoms in neonates are milder than those in adults. Signs include fever, cough, lethargy, runny nose, tachypnea, poor feeding, vomiting, diarrhea, and respiratory difficulty. 
The nurse is assigned to take care of a hospitalized patient with COVID-19. What orders does the nurse expect to find on the chart? Dexamethasone, oxygen, monoclonal antibodies, Coumadin. The correct answer is dexamethasone, oxygen, and monoclonal antibodies. Explanation. In this question and the one that follows, you are asked to distinguish between the treatments for hospitalized and non-hospitalized patients. It is important to remember the treatments are different depending on the setting. What are some cardiac complications that may be typically reported with COVID-19? Select all that apply. Myocarditis, ventricular hypertrophy, heart failure, mitral valve stenosis. The correct answer is myocarditis and heart failure. Explanation. Complications of COVID-19 include a number of cardiovascular conditions, including myocardial injury, myocarditis, myocardial infarction, heart failure, cardiomyopathy, arrhythmias, and cardiac arrest. What are some dermatologic conditions associated with COVID-19? Select all that apply. Onchocerciasis, urticaria, xanthomous rash, psoriasis. The correct answer is urticaria and eczematous rash. Explanation. Although the most significant complications of COVID-19 are pulmonary and cardiac, there are a number of skin conditions or dermatologic conditions seen such as hives, urticaria, maculopapular rash, vesicles, petechiae, purpura, and limb ischemia. The UAP asks the nurse what long code means. The nurse correctly answers, select all that apply. Prolonged hospitalization, a post-COVID syndrome, symptoms may continue for four or more weeks and are not explained by an alternative diagnosis, symptoms occurring during the first 28 days of COVID-19 infection. The correct answer is a post-COVID syndrome and symptoms may continue for four or more weeks and are not explained by an alternative diagnosis. Explanation. Long-term COVID symptoms have been referred to as long COVID or post-COVID syndrome. This refers to persistent symptoms in those who have recovered from COVID-19 initial illness. The nurse is interviewing a 42-year-old male patient with suspected COVID-19. What symptoms are suggestive of COVID-19 infection? Select all that apply. Fever, otitis media, headache, dry cough. The correct answer is fever, headache, and dry cough. Explanation. On the exam, it is important to pay attention to the age of the patient. It may be a clue that will help you select the correct answer. Otitis media is not a typical presenting symptom in COVID-19 patients. The nurse is interviewing a 65-year-old female patient with suspected COVID-19. What symptoms are suggestive of COVID-19 infection? Select all that apply. Sore throat, nausea, vomiting, chills, rigors, and confusion. The correct answer is sore throat, nausea, vomiting, chills and rigors, and confusion. Explanation. Notice in this question, the patient is 65 years of age. Older patients with COVID-19 have a higher risk of death from COVID-19. True or false, patients with HIV infections have less severe COVID-19 infection. True, false, or cannot be determined.
The correct answer is false. Explanation. HIV patients are immunocompromised and are in a high-risk group. They may present with more severe symptoms and they have worse outcomes. What statements below are true about COVID-19 testing? Select all that apply. Testing is unnecessary during flu season if the incidence of COVID-19 in the community is low. Patients suspected of COVID-19 infection who are symptomatic should be tested for COVID-19. Serology testing is the most common initial test for patients suspected of COVID-19. If testing is not available, the diagnosis of COVID-19 can be made presumptively based on the risk of exposure and clinical signs and symptoms. The correct answer is, patients suspected of COVID-19 infection who are symptomatic should be tested for COVID-19. And if testing is not available, the diagnosis of COVID-19 can be made presumptively based on the risk of exposure and clinical signs and symptoms. Explanation. Patients who present with signs and symptoms consistent with COVID-19 should be tested. A presumptive diagnosis may be made and quarantine may be initiated. Your history and exam are important, especially if you do not have testing available or testing is done late in the infection. The nurse is interviewing a patient with suspected COVID-19 what statements are true about close contacts? Select all that apply. After exposure to COVID-19, testing should occur as soon as possible. A close contact is only defined as a member of one's household. After a COVID-19 exposure, if the first test is negative and the patient is still symptomatic, retesting is done. Neonates born to mothers with COVID-19 do not need to be tested. The correct answer is, after exposure to COVID-19, testing should occur as soon as possible. And after a COVID-19 exposure, if the first test is negative and the patient is still symptomatic, retesting is done. Explanation. The CDC defines a close contact more broadly. History and exam are important and may guide retesting in some patients. What are presenting signs and symptoms of COVID-19 in children? Fever, reflux, chills, cough. The correct answer is fever, chills, and cough. Explanation. This question is asking about the presentation of COVID-19 in a pediatric patient. COVID-19 signs and symptoms may be different in children and neonates. The nurse is interviewing a patient with COVID-19. What statements are true about close contacts? Select all that apply. Neonates born to mothers with COVID-19 are tested. COVID-19 testing is not recommended before surgical procedures. Asymptomatic testing for COVID-19 patients may be recommended in congregate living areas, for example, in nursing homes and prisons. COVID-19 testing is not needed prior to organ transplantation. The correct answer is, neonates born to mothers with COVID-19 are tested, and asymptomatic testing for COVID-19 may be recommended in congregate living areas, for example, in nursing homes and prisons. Explanation. COVID-19 testing may be recommended in some patients undergoing invasive procedures. Asymptomatic testing may be recommended in congregate living facilities. What comorbidities are associated with severe illness and mortality in patients with COVID-19? Select all that apply. Hypothyroidism, obesity, anorexia, cardiovascular disease. The correct answer is obesity and cardiovascular disease. Explanation. There are a number of comorbidities that predict worse outcomes for patients and increase the risk 
or morbidity or mortality in patients with COVID-19. The nursing student asked her instructor about COVID-19. The nurse correctly states, select all that apply. Fatality rates are higher among outpatients, patients treated at home. Fatality rates are higher among hospitalized patients. Kawasaki disease is more common in the elderly. Fatality rates are higher among older patients and the elderly. The correct answer is, fatality rates are higher among hospitalized patients. And fatality rates are higher among older patients and the elderly. Explanation. Risk factors include age and hospitalization. Patients who are stable enough to remain at home have better outcomes. What are the most common long-term symptoms that the nurse would expect in a patient with COVID-19? Select all that apply. Fatigue, nausea, vomiting, shortness of breath, gastroesophageal reflux. The correct answer is fatigue and shortness of breath. Explanation, long-term COVID symptoms have been referred to as long COVID or post COVID syndrome. Symptoms include respiratory symptoms, fatigue, anemia, gastrointestinal disorders, headaches, muscle weakness, and others.